Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Ajo, True in Love, with another episode of Sports Overview Topics. Another good weekend, um, although not as much going around, considering it's the in-between week between the Super Bowl and the Championship weekend, but still a uh, bunch go over. Um, including the big trade that happened within the NFL. Talk about the Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff trade. Give my thoughts on that. Go over my prediction for Super Bowl 55, as well as something I wanted to touch up on um, last week. I'm a little late on it, but I'll go over it anyway. But nonetheless, thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Sage O2 in Love. Like and subscribe. If you're new to the podcast, follow up on my views, predictions, whatever you want to go over as far as pro wrestling or sports are concerned. But thank you all for joining me, and let's get into the podcast, shall we? So I'll start off with big news. I mean, Matthew Stafford trade. From trade from the Lions to the Rams for Jared Goff, two first round picks, one in 2022, 2023, and a third rounder for this year. I mean, my thoughts on the trade are. Pretty simple, but you'll get it. As far as Matthew Stafford sign, I mean, look, when it comes to being drafted, you have, if you're a really good player in the draft, basically, you know that. You're going to go to a team that lost a lot of games in that year, unless you're lucky. But, I mean, look, Matthew Stafford, ever since coming into the league in 2009, he has been one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league and still is over the last dozen years. Now, you can say what you want, how they've been to the playoffs, he hasn't won a playoff game. Well, this is a team sport, and look, I know that some players can mask the deficiencies, but the Lions organization has been bad for years. I mean, Calvin Johnson, Barry Sanders, pro- arguably the two biggest legends in Lions history. And they were handled poorly. They weren't really surrounded with the talent they needed or weren't supported in the proper way. And Matthew Stafford has been sorely lacking supporting talent around him. I mean, in 2011, when they made the playoffs as a wild card, they were 9-7, he threw for 5,000 yards, and... You know, they had Javid Best, who was injury prone coming out of college. They had Megtron, but besides that, they didn't really have anybody. And on defense, you know, they had Sue. He was in his second year, but. And that they don't, they didn't have a lot on defense, and they ran to the Saints, and they did what they could do, but 
you know, things happen. 2014, when they got a coaching uplift with Jim Caldwell in his first year, they went 11-5, made the playoffs, and they should have been the Cowboys, but because of a non-call on the pass interference, they didn't. And, you know, that team was talented. They had, you know, obviously Stafford, Megatron, Golden Tate. He was contributing. Reggie Bush, he was there. He contributed as well. They had Nadama Gasu, Ziggy Ansa, Nick Fairley. They had some talent on that defense. As well as Glover Quinn. They had talent. They just. 2016. They were decimated by injuries. They were 9-7. They made the playoffs. They were one win away from winning the division. In week 17. Unfortunately they couldn't do it. But. Besides Matthew Stafford. That team wasn't a playoff team. Eight fourth quarter come from behind victories that year. And they were 9-7. They made the playoffs, but the injuries could not overcome against the Seahawks. 2017, they were 9-7, but failed to make the playoffs. And then they... Let go of Jim Caldwell and sign Matt Patricia. I know the story there. Now he goes to a team in the Rams where he has a very good support around him. A very good team. Arguably the best team he's been on. Now, you know, they got quality. Quality receivers all around the board. With a stable line. You know. They got Robert Woods. Cooper Cup, Gerald Everett. Tyler Higby. And that all line. And on the defense side. You got Aaron Donald. Brockers. Larry Floyd. Jalen Ramsey. Darius Williams came along. Excuse me. Last year. I mean, you got pieces around that team. And he could be the missing piece that they're looking for. Because that team was the best overlooked team this year. I mean, they won games, but... Jerk off. Now again to the line side and Jared Goff. Jared Goff in 2017. Well, first starting off his rookie year. Under Jeff Fisher. Because Jared Goff, according to Jeff Fisher, probably would have started a game. That year. Because it was Case Keenum. Most of the way. And then Jared Goff. Took the load. The rest of the year. And showed some flashes. But. Showed some hiccups for a rookie. And then 2017. They brought in. Obviously. Sean McVay. Amplified the. Offense and he showed a really good year. And Todd Gurley was working, and that team was just working. Then 2018, they got off to a hot start, but they kind of fizzled out along with the injury to Todd Gurley. Now, when they signed CJ Anderson, that helped. Stable out the offense, but it just wasn't the same. 
2019 last year, they played well, and but they seemed kind of a mess. So somehow they went nine and seven. This year, obviously, they won games, like I said, but they just were kind of vanilla. They were the most talented, overlooked team, I think, this year. And I mean, you could say they had their chances at Green Bay if Donald was healthy, but still they lost and now two first round picks and a third that gets interesting because Brad Holmes who was with the Rams and Dan Campbell will see how their approach is you know whether they keep golf because that's a big contract and but they got some future picks around it. They got a third, obviously, this year, and then two f- future firsts. So it's good down the road. But this year, because Jared Goff is good. He's good, but, and as best he can be, be really good, but he's not great. He's good but yeah so that's my thoughts uh i'll be really intrigued for the rams this year and i'm happy for matthew Seffer. now one thing i wanted to touch on because i didn't get into it last week uh when when all the news has been kind of breaking down. But Philip Rivers decided to call it a year call it a career and after seventeen seasons he has done it all uh, except win a championship. I would say, or an MVP, but, you know, my view, because he's always going to be compared to Eli and Big Ben, because those were the other two taken as draft class. Now, obviously, for two years, he sat behind Drew Brees, and then took over the reins in 2006. That team went on a historic run in the regular season. LT had an MVP year, and that team was rolling, and it seemed like you could say it was kind of destined to win the Super Bowl, but... That was not to be as they fell short in the divisional round against the Patriots when the Patriots did not have the best day. But the Patriots and Tom Brady stuck around and won and done that credible season, regular season by the Chargers. And in 2007, they had another good year as well. Won two games in the playoffs, but it fell short in the AFC title game versus the Patriots. 2008, they won that. They fell short of the Steelers in the divisional round. 2009, they should have advanced, but missed kicks by their kicker. I believe he missed three field goals, and they lost by three to the Jets. He had the memo, though, that some things you can't control, 
And Philip Rivers, all the stats you want in the regular season, he was a very good competitor for the last decade. He is that guy that would just run through a wall, basically. And he was probably the best competitive quarterback besides Brady, I would say, that I've seen the last decade. And sure, he won't have the rings that Eli or Big Ben do, but he has the regular season stats to show for it. He has some exciting wins in the regular season and postseason. And he should be a Hall of Famer. Whether you're a casual now who wants to view it, but he is a Hall of Famer. And that's just the bottom line. Now, getting away from, before I touch on my Super Bowl 55 prediction, I wanted to touch on some NBA news because, on a few teams, because they've been kind of fizzled out, and they've kind of had stood, and they're teams that we felt that, we're going to be very much in contention based off how they ended the season last year. And now this year, they've been kind of feeling like, what the heck? And those teams I'm talking about, well, the Lakers, they were the one in the Western Conference, but now they fall into three. Which, I mean, it seems like they're kind of out of rhythm as a sort. I mean, they did lose a few key players, but still, obviously, they have LeBron, Anthony Davis, Kuzma, you get the memo. But I imagine they'll rebound. As far as the other two teams I want to talk about, the Dallas Mavericks are... Kind of in the basement right now in the Western Conference. And it's kind of confusing when you consider Luka and Tim Hardaway, Josh Richardson. Um, It's just strange. Porzingis, he made his return the other day from his Achilles injury. But... It seems like the timing of it all is just weird for them. And I hope they'll be able to rebound because they're an exciting team. They're a team you want to root for. But we'll see. And as well as the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat, who were in the finals, the NBA Finals with the Lakers, won the game, but... Just strange. They're in the bottom of the Eastern Conference. I mean, they've had injuries. Jimmy Butler's been in and out. Dragic, obviously, had that injury, but it's just strange to see how they were last year and now this year. It's confusing. Now, So, I just want to touch on that a little bit, but now I'll get to the main event, the creme la creme. Super Bowl 55 prediction. Chiefs versus Bucks. I mean, it started with 32, and... Now down to 14, and it's down to 2. Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady. 
Part 5. They faced each other in week 12. The Chiefs won narrowly after taking a big lead, 27-24. to The Bucks have gotten better since then. The Chiefs have been kind of off and on since then. You know, they were kind of reeling in the playoffs, even though they won. They were the number one seed. They've been finding ways to win. And against Cleveland, without Mahomes, they still found a way to win. Against Buffalo in the AFC title game, they fell down early, but managed adversity and battled all the way back. Tampa Bay, you know about their journey in the playoffs. You know, they went to Washington and they were given all they could against Tyler. Taylor Heineke, excuse me. The following week against the Saints and basically ending Drew Brees' career. Then last week, or last game, against Green Bay, and Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau. It was a dicey game, but the Bucks ultimately came out on top. Now they'll be the first team in history to host a Super Bowl, basically. Have a home game in the Super Bowl. Now... The Chiefs won't be without their starting tackles, Eric Fisher, Mitchell Schwartz. They'll be out. They'll have to start Mike Rammers and Andrew Wiley, the right guard, at tackle positions. Other than that, they're majority healthy. Obviously, we know the weapons all across the board. Their defense is still south with Tower Matthew, Honey Badger in the back, Chris Jones, Frank Clark up front. And for the Buccaneers are very talented as well, we know. You know, Tom Brady, the wide receivers, you know, Evans, Godwin, Antonio Brown will be back. Sky Miller, their own line has Done very well the last few games. And on their defensive side as well, you know, up front you got Shock Barrett, you got JPP, Devin White, Levante David, Vita Vea being back for a second game, Antoine Winfield should be back, you know, Jordan Whitehead as well. Who got injured. Their defense has been playing better. As late too. Now. They lap over 200 yards. Against Tyreek Hill. In the first matchup. I doubt they'll do. It again. Now. I'm not saying that. Tyreek Hill. Isn't going to get his touches. But. To have as big as a game. As he did then. Is. Will be. Pretty. Interesting. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think Todd Bill Bowles. Will construct a game plan. To, I mean, Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, they're going to get their touches, we know. But 
If you can just limit them a little bit, then you have a chance. Plus, the question will be is how will that align protect Mahomes against that front seven? Because Shaq Barrett harassed Aaron Rodgers. That in that NFC Championship game, he was basically living there rent free in that backfield. As well as Jason Pierre Paul, Via Vea, Nabika Sue. I mean, who's ever all line protects the best, I believe. That team will get it done. Because that all line of the Bucks can be leaky at times, as we know. And with Chris Jones and Frank Clark, we know they can mess up a game. And so it'll be very interesting to see how protection holds up in this game. I mean, quarterbacks, we know Tom Brady, you know, I said over and over again what he has brought to Tampa this year is nothing short of incredible. Patrick Mahomes this year, I mean, it's who we thought that it's what people expected. Now, probably didn't expect 14 2, but he's done greatly in his short time in the NFL. Now, I've heard all of the pressure on him and I wish people would just let his career play out and but with all the pressure they should win this game with how people talk about them. If they are who he says he is they say he is quote Dennis Green the great, late great Dennis Green. We'll see. Tom Brady, uh, those secondaries as well, will have probably a tough time. Because, you know, the chief secondary with Tyron Matthew, Juan Thornhill, Chadarius Ward, Rashad Breland, they're stout secondary, you know. Tyron Matthew has been doing really, really well as of late. The Honey Badger is really coming in to his own. Jadavius Ward, he's been a fine pickup. A fine pickup. Juan Thornhill is doing a very good job at safety as well. The secondary of the Bucks, Carlton Davis, you know, he was obviously burned by Tyreek Hill in that ma- their earlier matchup. They'll probably give him some help or probably put someone else on him. Murphy Bunting, Winfield, and Jordan Whitehead, they've all done really well and Mike Edwards he did a really good job coming in for Whitehead in that game as well or the NFC Championship game I mean it's interesting because 
both coaches are aggressive with the offense. You know, Bruce Arians, no risk it, no biscuit. If they can be aggressive, because I felt that the Bills were too conservative against the Chiefs. And against the Chiefs, you cannot be conservative. And the Bucks have the right mindset, I believe. I think with the injuries and with all it's that has happened to the Chiefs, I'm going with the Buccaneers to win this 37 to 31 over the Chiefs. And the exciting Super Bowl. But I just think the injuries are too much for the Chiefs to overcome. And with the mindset of the Bucks, they get it done in Tampa and their home stadium. Well, that was my prediction. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was the episode today. Uh, a little late, but still, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you all. Like and subscribe. Click on that bell. Thank you all. And see you next week.